Hello friends, my name is Shayla and today it is my third quarter book haul. So if you're not familiar with what I do on this channel, I only film my hauls quarterly. This time there will be three hauls because it's just going to be easier for me to separate this way. So this haul is physical books. The next haul will be physical manga and then the third one will be all of my digital reads because the digital ones aren't too many but throwing them into these lengthens them to a point where they're unwatchable in my opinion. So we're just going to break this down into physical books, physical manga, and then all of my digital stuff. And there weren't too many digital things through this bunch. So let's go ahead and dig right in. As usual, when I do my books, I'm going to start with the ones that were sent to me by publishers and then get into all the other stuff that I spent my money on. I do have a decent stack of book of the month books because I am ordering from both book of the month shops. So I'm ordering from the Y and the regular and I've been collecting some back titles. So there's quite a few in this haul, but yes, let's go ahead and dig right in. So you're not here all night. All right. So the first two go together. These are from forever romance. Most of these will be from forever romance. There's just one in the stack that's from source books. So as always, I am grateful to my friends at forever and Estelle, especially who spoil me rotten with what they send me and I just feel so blessed that they want to continue to work with me and I really do love the titles that they send me. That's not just because they're sent for free. I really do genuinely enjoy them or I would have stopped working with them a long time ago. So just know that whenever I'm talking about them, it's completely genuine and the team that I work with, they're just fantastic. So thank you forever. So let's dig into my gracious stack from them. So first up, we have two that are in the same series. So we have The Last True Cowboy and A Home at Chestnut Creek. And these are both Chestnut Creek novels. This is the start to the series. This one was my favorite, though. This one has a trope that I don't really like. It has the accidental pregnancy trope, which I know others have issues with as well, which is why I'm mentioning it. So know that before going into that one. But for an accidental pregnancy, it really wasn't that bad. Um, but Home at Chestnut Creek was fantastic. We're dealing with some more diverse, to me at least, characters and some people with some troubled pasts and stuff. And it just made for a much more interesting plot, in my opinion. So, yes, I do enjoy Laura Drake's writing and I thoroughly enjoyed Home at Chestnut Creek. Definitely check this one out. Next, we have Total Bravery by Piper Drake. I love it these books so much. Um, I'm not typically one for like the special ops kind of books, but the couple that I've gotten from Forever have been really great. Um, these true hero novels are definitely really good. Again, you deal with various forms of diversity in this one, and they're usually trying to take down like underground smuggling rings, which makes for a really interesting plot outside of your romance factor, and the steam factor is usually nice and high in these. And the angst between the two characters and this one in particular was really, really good. So again, it's one that I would definitely recommend. Now here's a couple that were sent to me in ARC form that I haven't gotten to yet. The first is Christmas on Harbony Harbor by Debbie Mason. You guys know that I really enjoy Debbie Mason on this channel. And I really fell in love with her when I got the Christmas care package from them last year. And I just really fell in love with her writing. And so this is one I haven't gotten to yet. It comes out October 1st. And I am really excited to dig into this. I'm hoping to squeeze it into my contemporary -thon TBR if I have time, but only if I have time. Otherwise, as soon as I'm done with contemporary -thon, I will devour this. And then the next one that I have is Born to be a Cowboy by R.C. Ryan. I have read other R.C. Ryan cowboy novels and genuinely enjoyed them. This one doesn't come out till late November, so I will most likely be reading this sometime in October or early November so that you guys can get my full thoughts on this one. Again, you know I like my cowboy smut. I'm weird. I know. It's okay. We embraced it a long time ago. All right. The next one is It Started With Christmas by Jenny Hale. Now, I threw myself down a Jenny Hale rabbit hole last Christmas, and so I have actually already read this. I read it digitally, so I'm grateful to have a physical copy because it's so sweet and so cute. This one we're dealing with a country western star who comes back home to the girl he's always loved, but she's like trying to move on. It's really cute. I really like it. And this next one, I was doubly blessed by forever because not only was I sent the ARC copy, they did go ahead and send me a physical 
a finished copy. And this is another Sweetwater Springs novel. This is one where I've really, this couple's been like hinted at since the first book. And I believe this is the third book in this series. So we've been getting hints of them for two books now. And it finally happens in this one. And it has the trope that I really love, which is um, throwing a child of one of the couple into the mix to help the couple really learn to trust each other and let their walls down because they've been burned. And it it's just so my jam. I really love it. So what I'll most likely do is take this finished copy and throw it into a giveaway, maybe on Instagram, so that I can share the love and this amazing story with all of you because it was definitely fun. Next, we have another one that happens to be a Christmas one that I haven't gotten to yet because I just received it. And that is Christmas with the Cowboy, which is a Longhorn Canyon novel. You guys know I love my Longhorn Canyon novels. <laughs> They're just so good. I really like Carolyn Brown and how she's handled all these Longhorn Canyon characters. And this one is Maverick. And he is a Scottish cowboy. Yeah, I know. It sounds weird. That we met in the last book. And I was slowly falling in love with him anyway. So we're finally getting his little love story. And this is someone that he has like previous history with. So like I'm all over it. This is going to be so good. All right. So next we have Sandpaper Shore by Debbie Mason. This is another one. I believe it's from our Harmony Harbor. Yes, this is from the Harmony Harbor series. So Debbie Mason has two series, mainly that work with forever at least. So I've read them. She has her Christmas Colorado series, which everything takes place in a town called Christmas. And then there's Harmony Harbor, which is more East Coast. Oh, what's the name of this place? Martha's Vineyard kind of feeling. And so these are really fun as well. I really enjoyed this one. If I remember right, this one has to deal with like weddings and matchmakers and it was just a really good time. So I really enjoyed this one. Next we have Wish You Were Mine by Tara Civic. This is a hard hitting contemporary. So if you're participating in contemporary -a thon last minute and are looking for one that's more hard hitting, definitely pick up either of Tara Civic's novels that are out. Um, this one, it's kind of like a friend love triangle almost kind of situation. So if you're looking for a good love triangle, I would definitely check this one out. And it's just really good. Highly recommend. Next is one that I haven't gotten around to reading yet. And that is The Secret Daughter by Kelly Rimmer. This one says, I, as I saw a newborn baby for the first time, I tried desperately to capture her face in my mind, to stamp it onto my eyelids as she was taken from me. I knew I might never see my daughter again. 38 years later, you were adopted. Three short words and Sabrina's life's fractures. There would forever be a before those words and an after. So obviously we're dealing with someone who's going to be going and seeking out their birth parent. And it's I think it's going to be really interesting. It just sounds really good. So I'm looking forward to it. Next is another Christmas novel that I was sent by an author that I love. And that is My Kind of Wonderful by Jill Chavez. Again, Forever was so kind to me. They kind of sent me a little mini Christmas package. And I've really enjoyed the picks for this year. I've loved the authors. And this one I don't know too much about. Um, I didn't really know anything about it before it was sent to me. And so I think I'm going to go into this one kind of blind and just enjoy it as a Christmas Jill Chavez story. Next up, we have The Paris Orphan by Natasha Lester. This is, again, is a historical romance while also dealing with current times. And so we're dealing with New York City and Paris in 1942 and then in France in 2005. So it's about the modern girl finding out more about her heritage and her family it's absolutely stunning, absolutely beautiful. That's all I want to tell you because I don't want to spoil it. But if you want more details, my Goodreads is always linked down below. And anything that I've read, you will definitely have more details in my Goodreads reviews. So this is the one that I was sent from Source Books. And that is The Shop on Main Street by Carolyn Brown. This definitely has that New Orleans feel to it. It was sent with a bunch of little like pearls and all sorts of stuff. I will link the Instagram post about this to give you a little more detail. Um, oh, but she works at a lingerie shop. This is going to be even more fun than I thought it was going to be. So I'm even more excited. I had forgotten that detail. And then last but not least for my spoiled by publisher stack is Dragonfly by Leela Mika. And this is a historical romance. And I believe it's wartime. I believe it's, yeah, 1942. And again, we're in France. I have a thing with France and historical fiction, apparently. But this one was really good. Again, my Goodreads review will be linked down below if you want more details. 
But I do love Leela Mikum as an author. I've really enjoyed reading her stuff. So this one was definitely a fun one for me. All right, the next deck I'm going to do is actually my contemporary -athon TBR. And so I'm just going to show it to you. So I will be talking in depth about all of these very soon, but I did get them in this quarter. So when I have more thoughts, check out my... I will be vlogging contemporary -athon. So the final vlog, I usually sum up everything and wrap up everything. So definitely check out my thoughts there on those. All right, so we're gonna do paperbacks and then hardbacks because I think that's just gonna be easier for my brain today. So first up we have The Prince and the Dressmaker by Jen Wang. This is a graphic novel about a prince and a dressmaker and it is all sorts of cute because the, drins, the prince actually likes to wear dresses and looks beautiful in dresses. And so the dressmaker kind of becomes his personal um, dressmaker and it's really cute, really sweet. I really loved this. And it talked a lot about just accepting people for who they are and finding your people in life. And it's just fantastic. I highly recommend. Next we have Lies, Love, and Breakfast at Tiffany's by Julie Wright. This was kindly given to me by one of my clients at work. And this is just a contemporary proper romance. No smut here. And it was just really sweet and really fun. Not my favorite thing in the world, but I did end up enjoying it. Next we have The Hating Game by Sally Thorne. I did finally read this. And I did end up enjoying it. Not as much as everybody else, but I did end up enjoying it. Um, I think there were just parts of it that I couldn't relate to as I'm in the kind of job where I don't really like work in an office. So there were parts of this that just felt almost forced to me, but it was still good. Um, I would, I think initially I gave it a 4.5, but I would give it a four now having spent some time away from it. Um, but yeah, it was good. It was solid, but definitely not a new favorite for me. Next, we have The Protector by Jolene Ellen Malpas. This is like Rich Girl and the undercover bodyguard kind of situation. I have a thing where I really like that. And again, there's um, secrets and there is a child involved in the background and all of this. And it's so well done. I really enjoyed this. I will definitely be picking up more in this series from Jodi Allen Malthus. Next, we have The Right Swipe by Alicia Rye. This was definitely a five stars. This is fantastic. I really loved it. Samson, the male counterpart, is truly a cinnamon roll and a good human, and I really like him. Rhiannon is unashamedly herself and fights very hard for the kind of life that she lives. It's fantastic. I really loved it. You can check out my... Um, read a Rama vlog if you want more details and thoughts on this. Next we have Getting Hot with the Scott by Melanie Johnson. I believe this is one that I also read during read a Rama. It might have been the reading rush. I think it was the reading rush on this one. But either way, it was a cute, fun, sometimes in love novel. I do plan on picking up more in this series. This is like travel smut. Like this is when people are traveling and they hook up with people and they end up working out later anyway. It's just cute. It's fun. I really enjoyed it. Next, I got a couple from my local used bookstore. And so I have The Reckless Bride by Stephanie Lawrence. And then two by Grace Burroughs. We've got No Other Duke Will Do and Two Scott to Handle. All of those are historical romances. I'm trying to get into more of those because outside of like Tessa Dare and Sarah McLean, I haven't read too much outside of what Forever has sent me. So I'm trying to branch out a little bit, try a few more. These next two are Harlequin Nocturne novels that I was sent in my Bubbles and Books box. So the first one we have here is Visionary Wolf, Wolf and Code Wolf by Linda O. Johnston and Linda Thompson Sundstrom. And then I also have This Strange Witchery and Tamed by the She-Wolf by Michael Hoff and Crystal Hollis. Um, both of these I will most likely be reading in October because they're more paranormal-y. I don't do super spooky, but paranormal I definitely do. So that's kind of my plan for October is to read a lot of paranormal. So since I didn't get to these in smutty September, that's the plan. Speaking of Tessa Dare, we've got Any Duchess Will Do. And this was one that I haven't gotten to yet, but it definitely looks fun. I really love Tessa Dare's style. It's fantastic. I just like her. And now we have a couple more um, from my Bubbles and Books box. So we have Dark Sentinel by Christine Feehan and then Magic Triumphs by Ilona Andrews, which is one of the Kate Daniels novels. I believe it's the last one from what I was reading online. I believe it's the final one, but I haven't read any of the Kate Daniels, Daniels series, so I definitely want to read the backlog before I get to this one. 
And yes, it still looks good. All right, so I have read The Wallflower Wager by Tessa Dare. I didn't organize these very well, as you can tell. Um, this was a really fun, smutty, snarky historical romance where we're dealing with a new money duke. So he's, you know, worked hard and come into money rather than from old money. And then the spinster who loves to collect and save animals who <laughs> lives next door and they keep running into each other. It's fantastic. It's so well done. Really loved it. Highly recommend. Next we have Brazen and the Beast by Sarah McLean. Um, I believe this is going to have some Beauty and the Beast vibes to it. I haven't read it yet. I was hoping to read it before um, Contemporary Athon, but that just didn't end up happening. Um, my friend got married this last week and it kind of took over my life. So a lot of reading didn't happen, but I'm really excited to get to this soon. Next we have At His Mercy by Shelley Bell, which is a BDSM smutty romance in my previous haul. Um, Forever had sent me the third book, but I've since gone and gotten the first and the second one. The second one I'll be reading during contemporary thon These are really fun. I really enjoy them. They're definitely not going to be for everyone because of some of their content, obviously, but I really enjoy them and think they're great. Next, we have The Harp of Kings by Julia Morellier. This is her new adult fantasy series. Um, I believe this is called the Warrior Bard. Yeah, Warrior Bard series. And... This is about a brother and a sister. It's fantastic. I really love this. Definitely check this one out if you like Morellier's writing. It's definitely got more flowery prose than some, so it's not going to be for everybody. Next, we have Lucky Harbor by Jill Shalvis, which is a bind-up of three different novels. So we've got Lucky in Love, At Last, and Forever, and A Day in this one. So this just looks like fun summertime romances. I was hoping to get to it this summer, ran out of time. So when I'm freezing my butt off in the winter and want to warm up, I'll probably pull it out. Next, we have one that I just barely picked up, and that is Thunderhead by Neil Schusterman. This is book two in the Scythe, Ark of the Scythe series. Um, I was hesitant of hesitating as to whether I was actually going to pick this up or not, and then I found it on sale, and it ended up being something that I'm glad I picked up, and I will be reading this most likely in October. Next, we have A Touch of Gold by Annie Sullivan. This is a... Midas Touch retelling, and you know me in retellings, I'm kind of just a sucker for them, and here we are. <laughs> Next we have Black Powder War, which is Tamarir, um book three. I have not gotten around to reading this yet, but I do want to continue in the Temerary series, so I just picked, I'm just picking them up one at a time, and so I've read the first two, so this is my next one. Now we have Hunted by Megan Spooner. This is a Beauty and the Beast retelling, and um, I've heard mixed things about this, and I didn't love Sherwood as much as I thought I would, but I've heard all like Hunted better, so that's why I'm giving it a try. Next we have The Girl in Red by Christina Henry. This is a um, Little Red Riding Hood retelling, and this one just looks like it would be great for this kind of fall time season. We haven't picked our Tell It Again book yet for October, but this is a contender if I'm up for choosing, obviously. April has a say, obviously, but... Oh, one that I got sent for review that I forgot to mention was 30 Life Crisis by Lisa Schwartz. It's got a foreword by Shane Dawson, I believe. She's a YouTuber. It says, Navigating My 30s, One Drunk Baby Shower at a Time. So I think this is just going to be interesting and a good time. Next we have Love and Luck by Jen Evans Welch. I read Love and Gelato last year and really enjoyed it. So I did want to continue on in this series. Um, this one takes place in Ireland as opposed to Italy. So I think it's going to be a good time. I tend to like Irish, Scottish things. So we're going with it. All right. And the last paper book in this stack is Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. Yes, I am so far behind on this train. But yeah. It's a royalty romance. Everybody on BookTube's talking about it, so I don't need to describe it. But I did finally pick up a copy. Um, Lindsay Tut and I will be buddy reading this soon, so you will hear my thoughts soon on this before the end of the year for sure. All right, let's dig into the hardbacks. So first up, we have Spin the Dawn by Elizabeth Lim. This is a Asian-inspired multiple fairy tale mashup is what I'm going to say. Um, it's pitched as Mulan meets Project Runway, and the first part of this book is definitely that, but it delves into other um, mythos and mythologies further on in the story. So I definitely, like, it dabbled in Aladdin a little bit and some other things. It was just a good time. Um, we will be doing the live show for this um, on the last Sunday of the month, 
So definitely look forward to that. Next we have The Modern Fairy Tales Bind Up by Holly Black. I had lots of thoughts, not all of them good. And um, I'll keep this with the rest of my Holly Black books, obviously. But um, I almost wish I would have found this at the library. But um, I might go back and revisit them again. I might have been a little jaded as I read them. So <laughs> we'll see how I feel on a revisit. Now we're getting into a bunch that I have not read yet, so you'll have to forgive me for not knowing too much about these, because I try to go in relatively blind to most of these. So the first one I've got here is Serpent and Dove by Shelley Maharan. Um, I know this is a witch and a witch hunter bound in holy matrimony. There was only one such story. There was only one way such a story could end, a stake and a match. So, yes. I think it's going to be a good time. Next we have The Chosen by Taryn Matharu. This is Taryn Matharu's new series. He's the one who did the Summoner series where it's like a little bit like Pokemon meets Harry Potter, I think is what a lot of people pitched that one as initially. But yes, um, this one just looks more like a traditional fantasy and I think I'm really going to like it. Next we have Stormrise by Jillian Bo Boehm. I don't know how to say her last name. Please forgive me, Jillian. Um, but... A dragon book? A short dragon book? Give it to me. Next we have The Magnolia Sword, A Ballad of Mulan by Sherry Thomas. I don't think I really need to explain what kind of book this is, but I'm definitely looking forward to getting to this one soon as well. Next we have Frankly in Love by David Yoon. I just picked this one up recently. Apparently I have the Barnes & Noble exclusive with the blue sprayed edges, and um, I know this deals with two Korean teens and family expectations and stuff. It just sounds really good. That's all I really know. And I'm kind of, you know, I've dipped my toe into K-dramas now, so it was kind of inevitable that I'd end up here. Next we have Gideon the Ninth by Tamsin Muir. Um, I, so many of my friends have read this and loved this that I'm trusting their recommendation on this one. So I hope to get to this one soon. I know it has to deal with necromancy, and I think it's going to be great. Oh, my leg is so dead. Wake up. Wake up, foot. So numb, it's like painful. All right, we also have Kingdom of Souls by Rena Barron. I know this is a fantasy that has a lot of diverse rep in this. On the back it says, I once laughed at stories about demons. Now I know that one may walk in my shadow. And it just sounds so good. I know, again, we're dealing with various mythos, and I love to educate myself on different cultures. I find it very, I just find it very enjoyable to learn about other cultures. So that's that one. Oh, I forgot one. Crap. And the last one before we get into the Book of the Month books is The Evil Queen by Gina Showalter. This was one of our Tell It Again book club picks again. And again, I had a lot of thoughts. I will leave the live show that April and I did linked down below for you guys to check out. So the rest of these are going to be Book of the Month books. If I repeat any from my previous haul, I'm sorry. I don't think I grabbed any duplicates. But we'll make sure that you guys know that I have them all. So first up, we have The 10,000 Doors of January by Alex E. Harrow. Um, I've heard a lot of mixed things about this one, and this is one that Lindsay and I picked out together, and we're both really looking forward to reading this. This will be one of our buddy reads coming up soon, so we're definitely looking forward to it. And the cover is just so pretty. Cal, what are you doing, sir? Do you want to come say hi to the people? No? You just want to crawl all over my stuff? Fine. All right, next up we have The Girl the Sea Gave Back by Adrian Young. This is one that it's a new YA fantasy, and I'm just really looking forward to it. The stones never lie, not to me. My eyes drifted over them, the pace of my heart quickening. What do you see? Juran's voice was heavy as he finally spoke. I stared at him, the weight of silence pushing down on me in the hot room until it was hard to draw breath. Um, in the future, there is no spell. So that's... All I need to know going into this, it looks like it's going to be awesome. I'm excited. Next, we have one that everybody is shocked that I haven't read yet. So I had an extra credit with Book of the Month, and I decided to pick it up. And that is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I have not read any Taylor Jenkins Reid yet, and everybody says if I'm going to read one, it needs to be this one. So here I am. Next, we have one that I will be finishing up as soon as I'm done filming this haul, and that is Permanent Record by Mary H.K. Choi. Um, Natalie over at Pages and Panels and I have been attempting to buddy read this this week, but I've been a horrible buddy reading partner and I am just really looking forward. I, I'm really adoring and loving this and I've just had a fabulous time reading it and this makes me want to go back and read Emergency Contact just because I like Choi's writing so much. So I recommend this one. 
I know that Mel from over at Mel to the Any absolutely loved this as well, so I know I'm not alone. Definitely give this one a chance if it sounds interesting at all to you. Next we have Mind Games by Shayna Silver. This is one that's kind of like, this one's more dystopic than I've read in a long while, and I just remember the plot really interesting me as I was on their website. And this is another one that Lindsay and I will be buddy reading as well because it equally piqued her interest. So we're kind of permanent buddy read partners, so we keep looking at the lists together so we make sure we get at least one the same every month. Next we have And We're Off by Dana Schwartz. I read this. I didn't love it so much, but I might revisit it. I think I was just in the wrong headspace when I read it initially. So I want to give it one more try before I, like one more read through before I decide if I'm going to keep it or not. Um, but yes, this is a travel contemporary and I really enjoyed it. Well, I didn't really enjoy it. You heard my thoughts. I'm, I've been going at this a half an hour, guys. We're getting there though. Um, next up, we have Ghosted by Rosie Walsh. This is a romance put out from Book of the Month. Um, this is one that's a little bit older. It says July 2018. Um, but on the top here, it says Seven Perfect Days, Then He Disappeared, A Love Story with a Secret at Its Heart. So I think it's going to be love and mystery, and I think it's just going to be a good time. I hope to get to this soon as well. Next, we have one that I read and loved, and that is House of Salt and Sorrows by Aaron A. Craig. This is a dark and twisty 12 Dancing Princesses retelling. I think October is the perfect month to read this because it's dark and atmospheric and moody and it's pretty true to the retelling. So if you're expecting something super amazing outside of what you know of the 12 Dancing Princesses story, that's not what you're really going to get in this one. But I thoroughly enjoyed this. Gave it five stars. Absolutely loved it. I know April... Um, my Tell It Again book club partner, she loved it as well. So, yes, we both love this. Both of us retelling stands endorse it. Definitely give it a... If it sounds interesting at all to you, definitely check it out. Next, we have a romance that I also liked, and that is Bringing Down the Duke by Evie Dunmore. This is a historical romance that takes place during the women's suffrage movement, movement and that takes a prominent role in the story as well. And I found it very intriguing and engaging, and I ended up really enjoying this. Um, I know it's not everybody's cup of tea, but I I think it's worth a try because I found it really enjoyable. Next, we have Wicked Fox by Kat Cho. This is a YA fantasy series based in Korean mythos of the Gumiho, which is their nine-tailed fox. Again, I had lots of thoughts. April and I ended up buddy reading this during Readorama. We both loved it. And this is what got me watching K-dramas, so... Anyways, I highly recommend it. It was a good time. I will probably reread it before book two comes out. But yes, we we really loved it. And then last but not least for this haul is Storm and Fury by Jennifer L. Armentrout. This is Jennifer L. Armentrout's new fantasy urban fantasy series that does tie in to a previous series of her, which I might go back and read just be for context purposes because I felt kind of thrown into things in the beginning of this. But yes, I liked this. I don't know that I loved this, but I liked it a lot. So I think I want to revisit those and then revisit this and see if my feelings change. That's kind of where I'm at with those. So guys, that is my book haul for the last quarter. It's a lot, I know. And I really am trying to scale back what I'm bringing in. I have read a good chunk of these, thankfully, or I have plans to read them soon. So yes. And there aren't, outside of like November, there aren't too many books books that I'm super excited about coming out the rest of the year. So I should be able to catch up on a lot of the ones that I haven't read yet. So anyways, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Hopefully you weren't too bored as I went through everything and I tried to keep you not here all day. So check out my other two hauls coming soon. <laughs> <laughs>